Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to be covering frequently asked questions that come from the comment section below these videos about radio controlled power systems. Now this could be anything from our brushless motor to our electronic speed control and as well our lithium polymer battery pack. What I've done is I've gone through a bunch of comments and I've picked out the comments that are asking questions that tend to repeat themselves through many different videos and over time. I then more generalize those questions so that we can run through them today. Now anytime you have a question, make sure you ask that question in the comment section below the video that you are watching. I always make it a priority to get those questions answered in order for you to have the most success with your radio controlled hobby. So let's go ahead and start with question number one. These are in fact in also no particular order. So question number one is, will a 120 amp 2 to 6 cell ESC work with a 2000 kV motor on 6 cell lithium polymer battery pack? Now it sounds like there's a lot of detail in that question. However, there's also a lot of missing information. The only thing that we'd be able to comfortably say is that 6 cell lithium polymer will be able to fit the voltage range of the speed control. Outside of that, there's nothing else that we can really say about this specific setup. What you want to be doing is asking with specific components being identified. You want to say the specific motor that you're using, the exact speed control that you're using, the exact lithium polymer battery pack that you're using. Also, more importantly, the exact radio controlled vehicle that you are using. You then also want to state if you're, it's a radio controlled car, for example, what kind of gearing are you using? Is it the stock gearing that comes with X tooth count for the pinion gear on that brushless motor? Or if it's a radio controlled airplane, you wanna be identifying the propeller pitch as well as diameter that you're using. Now let's go ahead and talk about the second question that we have here. How many amps will my system pull with the new power system that I am planning to put into my radio control vehicle? Now there's two ways that we can approach this. The first one is from a radio controlled airplane or drone helicopter as well as EDF jet, there are calculators that are available online that you can go ahead and search for that will help compute this exact value for you. Now, if you're running a car, there's not going to be too many calculators out there that's going to be able to help answer this question. And the reason is, is there's so many factors that combine in order to determine how much current that your system is going to be pulling. You have two ways that you can end up identifying how much current your system is going to pull. The first way is that you can find a system out there on a forum from someone who's run the similar setup as you. Look at the graph that they have posted in order to match it up to what your system is going to pull. The other way is to go ahead, simply install that power system into your radio control vehicle and then data log the amount of power that you are pulling. What you want to be checking for is reviewing that graph to make sure you're pulling the amount of current that fits your limitation. Another thing that you can also do is look at the temperature of all three components. Make sure that you are within the operating range of your brushless motor speed control as well as the lithium polymer battery. Now, I want my radio controlled vehicle to go faster. What component within my power system can I change to do so? Well, this is a great question because it is always the question that I'm asking myself with every single radio control vehicles that I own. Now, there's two ways that you could look at this. You could go ahead and change out one power system component only to find yourself needing to replace another. I call this the power system trickle effect. Changing out that battery from a six cell to an eight cell lithium polymer then forces you to buy that new speed control which has the greater range so it can operate with that new eight cell battery. Then you realize your brushless motor is not large enough to handle the load that you're gonna place on it and you have to go and buy a new brushless motor. So you can see what happens here as you go ahead and change out one component. Or another way that you can approach this is take a look at your power system and identify if anything is reaching the thermal limits. Review those data logs to see if you're hitting any of the continuous rated limitations of your components. If those things are okay, then you have headroom in order to increase the power output of your system. If you have a radio control car, for example, what you wanna do is go up the tooth count on your pinion gear. If you're running a 17 tooth pinion, go up to that 18 tooth pinion. If you're running a radio controlled airplane, for example, move up to a higher pitch on that propeller. If you're running that eight inch pitch, go for a nine inch pitch and see what that does for you. Either way, if you have the car or the plane, what you wanna do is again, remeasure 
through the data log what kind of current you're pulling and make sure you're within the limitations as well as your temperature limitations. Let's take a look at the next frequently asked question. The next one is, my power system is overheating. How do I correct this? Well, oddly enough, this is the exact opposite of what we just talked about. Here you have a system that is too hot and you want to lower that temperature to get out of that risky range. What you can do is you can go ahead and drop the teeth count in your radio control car in order to reduce the amount of power output that you're going to pull from your brushless system. If you're running a radio controlled airplane, you can change out the propeller in order to reduce the diameter of the propeller or the pitch of the propeller. Either one of those will reduce the amount of load, reducing overall the amount of power output that you're gonna draw from that system. Let's take a look at the next question that we have here. What is the number one reason that you see for power system failures? The first item that comes to mind is drawing too much power from your power system. This is placing a load that is too high for what the system can withstand. This could be as simple as too much gearing or too much propeller on those types of applications. The second area, which is also closely related, but coming from a different perspective, is there's too much KV on the brushless motor that you have selected, which forces you to draw a high amount of current because it's loaded significantly and not geared appropriately or not propped correctly. Now the way that you can fix those is doing exactly what we talked about in the previous question. The next question that we have here is, my brushless motor is rated for 50 amps continuous. Do I select a 50 amp ESC to match? Now there's two things that I want to talk about in this specific question. The first one is if you know that that brushless motor is going to pull 50 amps within your system, selecting a 50 amp speed control could get you into a lot of trouble. What you're doing is you're essentially setting it up so the speed control is right at the limitation. That might be right at the thermal limitation of that speed control, which means that it could fail. What you want to do is make sure you give yourself some headroom. I always say at least 20 to 30% minimum you want to select above that 50 amp load that you're going to place on your power system on the brushless motor. Now the second thing that I want to talk about is that 50 amp rated motor does not mean that you're going to pull 50 amps from that motor. You don't know exactly how that manufacturer has rated that motor for 50 amps. I can take a 50 amp continuous rated motor and I can cool it in a different way than what the manufacturer actually specified it under and draw 60 amps or even 70 amps from that motor continuously. Now what I'm trying to say here is just because your motor is rated at 50 amps doesn't mean that you're going to pull 50 amps from it. If you load your motor incorrectly, you can in fact pull more than what you're expecting out of that motor. At the same time, you can also do the opposite of that. If you lightly load the motor, you can pull much less than that 50 amp spec. In fact, if you lightly load it, you could pull upwards of only 10 amps from that brushless motor. What's really important in this question is what you plan to operate that motor at. If you're planning to operate that motor at 50 amps, you're also at the maximum rated specification of the motor too, and you don't leave yourself headroom. The final point to take away from this question is there's specifications for the motor, specifications for the speed control, and specifications for your battery. Regardless of those specifications, what ultimately matters is the amount of load that you're going to place on them. If your load is higher than these specifications, then these components are no good. If your load is under those specifications, then your system has the potential to work. That covers all the questions that we wanted to get through for today. There are more frequently asked questions. We can do another one of these videos. Like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next Monday.